Meanwhile, an American teenager killed by a U.S. drone strike in Yemen. His death is sparking new debate over America's use of drones to go after suspected terrorists. Brian Todd has been investigating the story for us. Uh, Brian, where was this teenager killed? What were the circumstances? Well, he had set out in Yemen looking for his father. The young man's father was Anwar al-Awlaki, who U.S. officials believe was a key al-Qaeda leader in Yemen. The father himself had been killed by a drone two weeks earlier. The family says the son had learned of that, was on his way back to the Yemeni capital when he himself was killed. But it's not clear if the son was a target of that strike. According to a Facebook tribute page, he liked watching The Simpsons, reading Harry Potter, listening to Snoop Dogg. He was a U.S. citizen born in Colorado. 16-year-old Abdulrahman al-Awlaki was like so many other kids his age. But he happened to be the son of Anwar al-Awlaki, the al-Qaeda leader seen by U.S. intelligence as a key operative in Yemen. Two weeks after his father was killed in a U.S. drone strike in Yemen, the younger al-Awlaki was also killed by a drone there, along with a teenage cousin and several others. The same strike also may have killed a prominent al-Qaeda militant. It's not clear why al-Awlaki's son was with that man. Was the teenager a militant? There's no evidence from anything he wrote, anything he said, or anything the family have said that he was a militant. By the same token, he could have decided to embark on the path of jihad after his father's death. Such honor and duty goes deep in Yemeni society. Please, thank you for joining us on World News. Why is it that the no-fly zone continues, and is there a safety issue with Gaddafi out of the picture still? Well, the no-fly zone, which isn't really a no-fly zone, it's an invasion. It's an occupation by NATO forces uh, in derogation of the sovereignty of, of Libya and the Libyan people. Why, why is it continuing? Because there's still resistance to the invaders. And we, we must understand uh, that uh, this country has been bombed uh, with 10,000 strike sorties, Tens of thousands of people have been killed. There's no actual tally. But when you, when you launch 10,000 strike sorties with more than 50,000 bombs, you, might, you can expect that this will not be quite humanitarian as laid out in Security Council Resolution 1973. That is why uh, this, uh, this, uh, bombing, these bombing raids are continuing, because the Transitional Council still does not control uh, the entire country and there are pockets of resistance which which prevail. Uh, and uh, we must understand that the main uh, foot soldiers of this uh, of this war are Al Qaeda affiliated. It's an Al Qaeda affiliated uh, militia, the Libya Islamic Fighting Group. They say they're former, but in fact, uh, nothing proves that these are not um, uh, terrorists uh, uh, and uh, Al Qaeda affiliated terrorists and. Those people committed uh, the, uh, the killing of Gaddafi, but they were under close surveillance of NATO forces. So this is a NATO uh, planned operation uh, which was geared towards the assassination uh, of, uh, of the political leader, Mama Gaddafi. Well, veterans today and... Uh a number of organizations, including uh, Marines to Support Occupy, uh, have been sending veterans around the country to stand between police and uh, the protesters in 70 and more cities in the U.S. because the police have been becoming increasingly violent. And we figured that putting uh, decorated war veterans in uniform, some of them, not everybody's authorized to still wear a uniform, but putting uh, veterans out there, we figured would defuse the situation and control what has been police violence. We were very upset with the New York police because we found that they were taking money from the banking organizations, many of them working directly for the banks. Uh, we have a We've developed a very severe lack of trust in our uh, police organizations. Well, here in Oakland, uh, a Marine veteran, uh, two-time veteran of uh, Iraq, uh, Marine Corporal Scott Olson, who was shot in the head with a rubber bullet. He's uh, uh, in critical condition in a hospital in California. Uh, I'm not in a position to... Re 
respond openly and how I feel about this because I'm living in a country that's frankly not free enough to say this. But uh, if police are going to be shooting at military veterans and they think that, uh, uh, I think the police are trying to, uh, trying to force veterans to respond. And uh, it's the absolute wrong thing to do. This, is, this could turn, here in the U.S., this could turn into a shooting war, bombs, snipers, acts of terror. And I think that's the whole purpose of this. And this is very much what went on in Oakland uh, is an act of terror against American citizens perpetrated by police on behalf of banks. I know they're being paid to do it. I know that the organizations uh, Occupy Wall Street have been infiltrated by uh, police. And uh, we're expecting terror bombings. We're expecting police to do this. And uh, this is going to get out of hand. And uh, they're underestimating the outrage the American people have against their government at local level, at national level. Um, the suffering uh, by you know by standards, Americans live very well. The American people are suffering in an unprecedented way, more than anyone ever imagines, and more than is ever reported anywhere. And America, uh, Americans are coming together against their own governments at every level in ways that aren't being reported. This isn't a joke. This is a revolution. This is an uprising here, exactly as in Egypt. And it may turn exactly as in Libya. It's, it's not that far from this. And the military is not going to stand behind this government and these police. I can, uh, I, I can certainly speak for 500,000 military that are members of our organization, and we're not standing behind a police state government against the people of the United States. We're not going to do it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Friday, October 28th, 2011, and I'm Darko. Please visit my website, ggnonline.com. That's www.ggnonline.com. I have a poll up there. There's three days left to vote. Um, also, if you'd like, uh, you can donate. It would be very, very much appreciated. Um, also, you can put in your email address, and you can get uh, GGN updates. Besides that, all the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. I'm going to bust into four parts today for sure because I still have more news to get to, so I'm just going to get right to it. Um, we're going to cover the war, the war of terror and um, the economy. So let's get to it. Pakistan remains silent over drones. Senior Pakistani politician has slammed Islamabad for the U.S. drone strikes in the country's northwestern tribal belt near Afghanistan. And he said that the U.S. drone tax would immediately come to an end should Pakistan strongly urge the Obama regime to do so. Moving on, Pakistanis protest U.S. drone tax. Uh, said they've held massive protests, and of course they did like four days ago, but then again today to condemn the U.S. assassination drone strikes, saying that the attacks kill more civilians than terrorists. Then we have here, and of course that's right, just like, um, uh, what was that uh, that little clip that I showed, uh, things, to, things to Come from 1936, uh, right? They just bombed the people and the tribes and the little national governments and the warlords. They just bomb, like they're in Somalia, they're bombing them out of existence and bombing their will out of them. And uh, that's so that's the target is to bomb the actual civilians. And the terrorists are the ones that fight back. It says here, French warships hit Somalia coastline. So French warships have shelled parts of the coastline, the Horn of Africa, Somalia with 20 heavy missiles. And, of course, you know that there's going to be numbers of heavy casualties. And then we have U.S. flies drones from Ethiopia to fight Somali militants. That's right, resistors to the occupation. It says here, U.S. military has begun flying drone aircraft in a base in Ethiopia. And, of course, what? It's going to be CIA headed up. We have here, Kenyan airstrikes kill 41 in Somalia. Then next up, 33 civilians die in Mogadishu battle. That's right. Uh, fierce fire exchange between African Union forces and Al-Shabaab fighters. And, of course, they're getting uh, um, strafed by Kenyan forces, right, in the air and in CIA drones. So they're just getting uh, just squeezed right now in Somalia. Uh, America's unnoticed military, and those that say, oh, you have no compassion, or well, not no compassion, but um, you have no idea of the history and the geography of that area. Well, I do, and I'm sorry. I don't just believe everything that I'm told, and uh, I know what's going on over there, and it's atrocities. There are atrocities. There are murders. 
being done right out in plain view and nobody really gives a shit and people just go rah 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 wave their flags and say yeah we killed bin Laden, we killed that uh, and while and whatever his name was the american citizen that they killed and they killed his son and all of his relatives just like Gaddafi with his grandchildren because they care so much about freedom democracy it says here americans unnoticed military aggression u.s combat troops arrive in uganda that's right hundreds of troops and obama sent them over there said to fight the lord's resistance army so the enemy this time uh is a mini guerrilla actually a religious sect with no social base and uh obama goes in there and says they will stay as long as necessary and in other words like iraq and pakistan uh, as long as the military industrial complex wants them to be there and we saw this piece of bullshit propaganda flying through the newswire 6.6 .6 billion in lost cash iraq uh cash now accounted for inspector says so yeah it uh, goes on here and says that uh, it ended up uh going to where it was supposed to go so uh wherever the hell that was iraq war will cost more than world wars too so iraq remember this oh the oil is going to pay for itself remember that guys oh the oil is going to pay for itself when we go in and take out uh saddam and invade iraq because they were tied to weapons of, or tied to 9-11 no they weren't and they couldn't prove that they had yellow cake ring no they didn't they had weapons of mass destruction no they didn't uh, they were tied to Al Qaeda. No, they weren't. So all of it was bullshit, and of course, what to make a lot of money for these defense contractors. It's going to cost even more now because what is they're pulling the troops out and winding down. What a bunch of BS again. They're going to have what? They're going to have mercenaries there. They're going to pay a hundred thousand dollars per body instead of what maybe twenty thousand dollars per soldier. Leon Panetta to toast Obama bin Laden. So cheers again. Uh, the death uh, with a ten thousand dollar bottle of wine following a bet with a restaurateur <laughs> that's so stupid too because he's what he's been dead for seven years and they just use him as a programming icon to uh for this shadow uh terrorist group known as al-qaeda which is basically headed up by his former agency the cia is now dod director and uh so yeah it makes sense that he would know that he would win the bet because well he was already dead and they were just going to go in there and just put on this big charade uh, with the uh, drones and helicopters and taking them out in Pakistan. Help us out, Europe begs China. Desperate Euro chief looks to the east to fund huge bailout gamble, but China un uninterested in more EU bonds. That's what they said in Beijing. Then sounds of cannons warning, warning of South China Sea dispute. We moved down here, said on Tuesday, Chinese national uh, newspaper published a controversial editorial, and it says that the... Um, Countries involved in the South China Sea dispute to mentally prepare for the sounds of cannons. I've covered the South China Sea and talking about how Clinton and them go down there and uh, uh, start uh, rattling, saber rattling, stuff like that, saying this is our trade route. And um, also they're holding a lot of drills with South Korea. So stick with me. We're going to move a little faster here. NATO sends more troops to Kosovo border, and that's in August uh, 2nd, 2011. And then look at this. We have Bosnia president terrorist attack in the U.S. Embassy. So go figure. Gun ownership soars to 18-year high, 47% of Americans, that is. And concealed carry but, but, uh, gun bill moves closer to House vote, allowing you to carry in 49 states. 48 states, whatever, you know what I mean. Canada's conservative government to ease gun laws. I will believe that when I see it. Generators seized from New York Wall Street protesters because what? Oh, the fire department did an inspection and they weren't safe. See, it's all about safety. Former KKK Grand Wizard uh, supports the Wall Street movement and so does Egypt's top Facebook revolutionary who's now advising Wall Street. Yes, comrade. Says here, Occupy DC's website promotes world law and socialism. Remember Brzezinski asking, calling for a list of the to pressure them to give back. The Vatican is calling for a new global governing body endowed with the authority to tax and manage all movement of capital between countries. Sound from And they say the NSA is going to help uh, banks battle hackers, but I think that they're actually going to help with this, with the IRS. Swiss banks said to ready to pay billions and disclose customer names. Sound familiar? Again, it's Swiss. Uh, so that's where it all comes out of, right? Uh, Knights Templar, Swiss banker released anti-greed oath. So now Swiss bankers just uh, occupying Wall Street as well. Obama says he'll be taking executive actions without Congress on a regular basis to heal the economy. New Obama foreclosure plan helps banks at taxpayers' expense. And then we have super committee, the super secret committee holds public session privately on 
uh, budget, much like that form of democracy. And of course, they're going to cut a bunch of elderly Medicare, right? Eurozone do quadruple bailout fun. So the Greeks came up with this little poster of uh, Merkel. Then we have Canadians work longer, retirement life longer, so work harder. Yeah, you're going to live longer, right? Eastern Europeans steal chewing gum for currency, but the Greeks are also turning to bartering. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.